Well, there's one thing you could say about Red Cat Racing, and that is they offer enough four-wheel drive electric monster trucks. They've got a whole selection of them, and we've reviewed a couple of them here on the channel already. We already did the Volcano, we did the Ducono, and today I have for you the TRMT-10E. And this is a really cool monster truck. There's a lot of cool features on this that I can't wait to tell you about. But uh, as you may know, you know, Red Cat Racing does work with some suppliers. With this one, they work with Team Magic. They create some really cool vehicles, a lot of attention to detail. And it's really cool that, you know, Red Cat is working with them to offer basically a really high-end monster truck here. A lot of neat stuff to talk to you guys about. So why don't we just jump right into it? First, we're gonna talk about the exterior. And as you may notice, it comes with this really cool stealthy truck body. It's got this like really dark uh, gray bluish metallic uh, paint job to it with a black hood here and it's got some graphics kind of just black graphics on the side very faint TRMT10E logo on there really aggressive front grill on this thing too that just looks really awesome got some tail lights out back everything's pre-cut obviously holes are drilled and uh, the body just looks killer and it feels like it's a it's a good Lexan so hopefully that holds up to some bashing and stuff definitely like the body they chose for this the other exterior features that I want to talk to you guys about is this killer front bumper on this thing. This, you know, this thing almost looks like an aggressive trail truck bumper. It's got a little fair lead opening there, I guess. And, but what I really like about it, it's got these three LED light buckets in there with LED lights, of course. You gotta have LED lights in your RC car. It's just a must have nowadays. I think it's gonna take a good beating and everything. It's pretty flexible, so hopefully it should take uh, some impact and stuff. The other thing I want to talk to you guys about are these wheels and tires. Check these things out. These are pretty cool. It's a nice, soft, you know, almost racing compound rubber to it. Uh, you know, hopefully it doesn't grow too much when I'm running this thing on 3S. Yes, I'm going to run it on 3S, uh, but the rims on here are absolutely killer too. I like how it's got a little TRMT10E logo in them. Just a decal stuck to one of the spokes on there, but you know, it's a, it's that detail that I was telling you guys about. You guys see a lot of detail in this stuff. I really like the wheels. One thing to note about the wheels is they are a 14 millimeter hex. You know, standard is usually like a 12 millimeter, but I think because of the power, they you know, they bulked up things on this. They went with a 14 millimeter hex. So your wheel options might be a little limited, and I don't think it's gonna be easy to swap over to a 12 millimeter hex. Just wanted to throw that out to you guys in case you were looking at other tire and wheel options, but these look pretty cool. Interested to see how it works. And then finally, I wanna to talk to you guys about this wheelie bar out back. Really sick looking wheelie bar. We've got a single wheel, big ball bearings in there, really solid arm to support the wheel, and you can adjust it as well. All right, now it's time to talk about the chassis. And for the chassis, we've got a composite molded, uh, basically like a tub chassis, a little on the high CG side, you know, just to get your ground clearance in there, but it's kind of just a square tub. And definitely it has enough space for uh, a selection of batteries here, you know, kind of your standard, you know, 2S, 3S LiPo batteries, uses a Velcro strap to secure them. It's definitely a lot of bracing in this chassis. It's got a big center section of plastic upper deck uh, that looks really bulky. It's got these braces in the front and rear for the shock towers and stuff. And then on the bottom of it, we've got uh, just a multiple section piece chassis here. We've got this front bumper skid, rear plate skid, and then you've got these red pieces here that are, are like the, the supports basically. Uh, so it's a multiple piece chassis, but it looks very cool. It feels definitely feels very solid you know so if you're gonna go out there and launch this thing into the sky I think it's gonna hold up pretty well just by the looks of it all right now it's time to talk about the suspension and I have to start off by saying the suspension on this is nice and smooth, but it's a bit on the firm side. So yeah, if you're going for some big air with some, some harsh landings, I think this uh, suspension is going to soak it up. And some of those features that make up this plush suspension are these large bore shocks on here. And these are pretty big. And they are a composite shock, but they look pretty bulky. I mean, they have a really wide top cap to them, a uh, really heavy duty shock shaft here, really thick shock shaft, and some firm springs for the rebound. But it feels really, really good. The shocks are mounted to an aluminum shock tower, both front and rear. And as I talk about the suspension, basically it's the same front and rear. So when I talk about the arms and the, and the shocks and stuff like that, it's the same front to rear on this thing, which, you know, in my opinion, is kind of a good thing in terms of if you're going to have spare parts for it, you know, you could use the parts 
both front and rear and that you know reduces the parts you have in your toolbox but on the other side of it is the way it's set up it uses a rear tie rod uh, to connect the, the steer the rear steering knuckle to the chassis and that causes a little bit of a toe change when you are you know cycling through the suspension i would have rather have seen like an h arm in the rear uh, for the suspension, but this setup does work and, uh, you know, we'll see if it changes the handling, you know, when I'm out there driving it. But back to the, you know, the suspension itself, it's got dual wishbone suspension. The upper arm is really well braced. Not a lot of flex in the arm. The, the supplier of this truck uses some really good plastics, uh, lower A arm, and it uses a pivot ball style suspension. So it's got pivot balls that connect the steering knuckle, uh, to the suspension arms and, and much like a racing setup. It's a really nice smooth system it's adjustable and overall it just works really well and and just the look of the steering knuckles they are composite plastic but they are well braced they got a nice web uh, that goes down to the steering arm on it for extra support and stuff so again really well designed stuff going on here the inner hinge pins are actually supported by an aluminum plate front and rear so that prevents the bulkhead from breaking and again it's just really well designed overall there is some suspension tuning uh, you can move the shocks around to, to alter the handling of the vehicle you know again same in the rear you can move the the shocks around to, to change things up it does look like there is a spot for a sway bar it doesn't come with a sway bar I'm not too upset it's a monster truck you know I, I could deal without a sway bar on here but overall i really just like the suspension package on here it looks like it's going to work really well can't wait to try that out now it's time to talk about the drivetrain and the drivetrain seems to be pretty heavy duty on this truck we've got a front and rear differential uh gear differential all metal gears inside really heavy duty looking out drives on those differentials so that's always good especially when you're laying down a lot of power in a monster truck it has CV style universal axles, front and rear, and the shafts on the axles look pretty thick. So, you know, as I mentioned, this thing looks like it's bulked up and, and you know, I think it's going to take a lot of abuse. Uh, what I really like is out at those 14 millimeter hexes, uh, the shaft of the axle is much thicker than we're used to seeing uh, on other vehicles. So, you know, I don't think you're going to bend an axle shaft on this truck anytime soon. Uh, in the center, we've got uh, more steel dog bones going front uh, to the center, center to the rear. Uh, and of course, the entire drivetrain rides on ball bearings. The other nice feature of this center spur gear is steel and of course the pinion gear is steel but it's nice that you know there's no plastic gear here again all bulked up and ready for some serious power okay the steering on this pretty much your standard dual bell crank steering it does have a servo saver setup uh the servos you know flipped over upside down here and it has a short link over to the servo saver the tie rods are adjustable on here so you could go and adjust toe if you did you know for some reason want to do that and the other thing i really like about this steering is there is an aluminum drag link bar that connects the two steering cranks so usually we see plastic there and you know again bulk there's a lot of bulk going on a lot of detail as i mentioned before before, and that aluminum steering link is a nice feature on this truck. All right, now I think it's time to talk about the electronics. And this truck has a really good electronics package, in my opinion, right out of the box. Let's start off with the servo on this. This is a Savox waterproof high torque digital servo metal gears. So this thing is going to hold up to abuse and you can go splash through the water, go through mud and stuff like that. And it's not going to affect the servo. Pretty much everything in here is waterproof and even down to the receiver box. Can't wait to tell you about that. But first, let me tell you about the motor. 4400 kV motor in this. It's got to provide plenty of power, you know, long can motor, so it's got to have lots of torque to it. Uh, it is mounted to an aluminum motor mount, which I really like, red anodized as well. Uh, so that's pretty cool, but it's just a nice firm mount for the motor. Of course, dissipates a little heat. Onto the speed controller. It is a Hobbywing based speed controller. It is the Max 10, which is a great speed controller. Massive heat sink on this thing. It even has a cooling fan. Uh, you know, all the way down to the switch on this thing. It's got a little rubber boot just to make sure it's waterproof. It does have a T plug style connector on that. Just be aware of that when you're buying batteries for this thing. Uh, but that is a great speed controller. I've heard you know great things about that. 
Now onto the receiver. The receiver's tucked away in this completely, I would say completely waterproof receiver box. It has a, a really heavy duty gasket uh, on the top cover. It's got six screws to hold it down. And then when I popped it open, I noticed where the wires go into the box, it is sealed with some sort of silicone. So I don't think water's ever gonna get into that box if you're out splashing around with this truck. And the receiver's bound to this radio system here. I'm gonna talk to you about that in just a minute. But uh, you know, the electronics package in here is really really cool and you know that leads me to some other details that i really want to just point out to you guys you know the the kind of over engineering over thought you know details on this truck you know i mentioned how the, the radio box is sealed but you know the wires coming out of the radio box run down through this channel and it's got a cover on the channel which is really nice i mean just kind of that detail the wires for the motor, it have a little clamp on them so they're not moving around. It's got a little kind of mounting boss for the plugs from the receiver so you could go and plug the servo in and not have to route the wire all the way around. Same with the LED lights. It's plugged into this bank over here so it's nice and easy to access. I, I really like how you know all those little details are, are all over this and even down to the switch mount. I mean, the switch is not gonna move. It's not too side taped down. Uh, you know, it's, it's kind of clamped down in here by the receiver box and even the speed controller. It's clamped down with the, with the fan mounts on here. So, I mean, everything is just really well thought out, really well engineered. And that pretty much wraps up all the details of the truck itself really liking all the features on this. Now, let me talk to you really quickly about everything that comes in the box. Okay, so when I opened the box on this truck, it was really well packaged in a very small box. Uh, the only thing that I noticed about it though was it did kind of push down some of the tires and you know I'm waiting for the foam to kind of recover from being squished in there but you know once I start driving it that'll probably fix itself but really well packed in there you know you got to go put the tires on which is which is understandable but also in the box was this radio system the RX1 and it's kind of like a you know really basic radio system uh really plasticky feel to the radio it does have a rubber grip on here and it is digital so all your trim stuff here is digital all your reversing is digital and your even your trim switches and stuff uh, that's a dual rate switch actually is is all digital which is pretty cool batteries get loaded in through the bottom the only thing I don't like about this radio, other than it's very plasticky, is the, the handle on this. It feels really weird. So, um, you know, that's just something just want to throw out to you guys what I think about it. Uh, but I do like that it is all digital. I think that's pretty neat. Other thing I found in the box was a screen for the fan. So if you're going to run somewhere really sandy and dirty, you might want to go throw that screen on there. We've got a box wrench so you can put the wheels on and then some preload collars for the shocks. And then your usual paperwork of instructions, uh, which is really nicely laid out. Definitely go through those. And even a sheet of accessory parts for this. So there are a ton of option parts and the option parts look really, really good. I mean, even down to metal skid plates, CNC skid plates here and, and aluminum arms and stuff. So if you want to go wild and load this thing up with option parts, uh, I would definitely check out that page right there. All right, guys, I think that just leaves driving the truck and I'm going to go have a lot of fun with it.
right, it's time to wrap up the review of the TRMT-10E. We've got a lot to talk about. We've got to talk about power. We've got to talk about dirt flying. And we got to talk about a little bit of carnage that's going to come towards the end of this. But I went to one of my usual test spots up in Wolka, Connecticut. Just an off-road bashing field. And, uh, you know, just went wild with this thing. A lot of what you saw was running on 2S. And then a lot of the you know, like instant backflips when I was just punching the throttle, that was running on 3S, and uh, that's when the carnage happened. So uh, let's just talk about 2S action because it is a lot of fun on 2S. Uh, it handles pretty well. Uh, this thing, I think it's more of a uh, like a flat dirt track kind of truck you know what i'm saying um you know just uh, it's more smooth surfaces those rocks out in the field kind of toss this truck around a little bit and even the the deep ruts and stuff kind of toss it around and a little bit of you know just wheeling it to get it back under control uh, but when I went and drove it on some smoother surfaces, I had a lot more fun with it there. Over at a BMX track, my local BMX track took it over there. Didn't bring the camera with me, but just took it out for some additional testing. And it was a lot more fun just, you know, kind of launching it over uh, the BMX jumps, having nice smooth landers in the back. And that's when this truck was, was really shined. Handled a lot better, landed a lot better. Um, you know, the jumps, you just got to watch yourself. There's a lot of power in this thing. So, you know, it might want to flip over backwards. You know, I, I did show you backflip uh in in the action portion of the video there uh so it's capable of doing that but with the short wheelbase and everything and the power it just kind of wants to go up so just be aware of that I and mean, watch your throttle when you're jumping it you know on flat landings it kind of bounced up a bit uh but when it has a lander to land on nice and smooth so handling is pretty fair on this truck i, I you know maybe you know if you're running like i said on a smoother surface uh, you know grass uh you know dirt parking lots, BMX track, which is nice and smooth, uh, even, you know, a, a, a racetrack, an RC racetrack. I think it'll be a lot of fun there in the handling department. Onto the steering of it, uh, you know, that servo works pretty awesome in there. Off power, it's got a lot of steering to it. Uh, you know, once you start, you know, adding more power to it, there's a bit of on power push, of course, is to be expected, but you just have to stab the brake and you can whip this thing right around really quick. Uh, so the steering on this thing, very good, no complaints whatsoever, especially with that good servo in there. Might want to go and throw an aluminum arm in there just to, to be on the safe side when you're out uh, bashing and stuff like that, but I didn't have any problems with the stock plastic arm. All right, onto the power of it. It's got a lot of power under the hood. And on 2S, again, it was a lot of fun. You can get some big air with this thing. Uh, definitely tear up a lot of dirt. And the power slides are just awesome, uh, you know, going through berms and stuff like that. So I like the power on it. And on the braking side, I mean, this thing could just really lock them up and slow up really quick. So it works really well uh, in the power department, the braking department. And really, this truck was just a lot of fun. It wants to pull the front wheels up a lot. Uh, but, uh, you know, as long as you're throttling it properly, Properly. You can keep this thing just ripping through the dirt over jumps and stuff. Very cool truck. Now onto the issues that I had with it. Um, so number one, the front bumper. Front bumper, which I, I, I got a thing for front bumpers. This front bumper is really cool. And what I didn't know is it actually has red LED lights in there too on the outside, which is like super cool. But the problem with this bumper is it's got like a right angle right here at the bottom. So the bumper slants down and then goes, it juts down and then it's got like a right angle. So that thing just basically hits whatever is, you know, you're trying to go over. And I had a lot of rocks and stuff like that. And what happened was, is because it was hitting, it actually ripped down and it pulled through the screws on the bottom of the skid. So it's kind of like angled down now um, and kind of catches on things. I think that's why they came out with those aluminum uh, skid plates that you could go and put under there. Uh, I think that's just kind of for bracing the bumper. So I already got those. I'm going to put those on this truck. I think that should help out the little bumper issue there. The other th issue I had was the rear ring gear. Uh, when I ran it on 3S, and yeah, when you add more power to stuff, things can happen. Uh, on 3S, it did break off a couple of teeth on the gear in there. And as you know, that's a problem. Uh, you know, you have to basically stop and you have to order a part to fix it. Um, and so that's what I did. However, Red Cat offers a hardened steel machine ring and pinion gear set for this. So that's what went in there um, because, you know, I don't want to ever deal with that again. So that's what I put in the rear of it. That's what happened on, uh, you know, again, 3S power. Didn't have any problems whatsoever when I was running on 2S. And maybe something could have happened. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I, I tend to lean towards when you had power, Sutton Sutton can break. Um, so I want to let you guys know what I experienced with this. Uh, but overall, Overall, it was a tough machine. It was handling a lot of rough tumbles, a lot of rough crashes, upside down on the roof. Uh, and, uh, you know, overall, it's just a fun truck. Uh, you know, 
Red Cat offers a bunch of different trucks, and this is certainly one worthy of checking out if you're looking to get into a four-wheel drive electric monster truck.